All right, folks, we're back at the Metabolic Health Summit with the legend, Dr. Chris Palmer. <laughs> I, I, I mean, I know you get this Am a I lot. a legend, really? No, Am I a legend? <laughs> listen, listen, my friend. The, the groundbreaking work that you provided from a mental health perspective is, is something else. And we're talking in an era where mental health is in, a, in an ep epidemic proportions. Where in post-pandemic, we're seeing it in our youth. We're seeing it in all stages. And you're providing people with the knowledge and solutions to be able to address this. To me, this is when I'm saying this is legendary. So I, I want to maybe get a sense from you what your talk was like yesterday. I, 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 unfortunately, I wasn't here, but there has been a ton of people coming out saying, did you hear Chris's talk? Did you hear Chris's talk? <laughs> and so just given a sense of, from people that, that didn't get a chance to, to see it, what, what were the key themes yesterday? So, you know, one key theme is that metabolic health affects the entire body and brain. And, you know, most people think about metabolic health as it relates to your weight, obesity, maybe type 2 diabetes, cardiovascular disease. And for a lot of people, that's where metabolic health begins and ends. Mm -hmm. But... For anybody who knows anything about metabolic health, you know it's not just limited to those organs or those diseases. It also affects your liver with fatty liver disease. It affects your pancreas. It affects your visceral fat. It affects your ovaries if you're a woman. You might have polycystic ovarian syndrome. And that can affect your reproductive health. It affects your immune system. So people with metabolic health conditions are more likely to get infections. It affects your joints. People with metabolic health issues are more likely to get autoimmune diseases. So it affects numerous organs and tissues and cells throughout the body. Guess what? Guess what, everyone? The brain is an organ, too. And it is not immune to metabolic dysfunction. And when your brain is metabolically compromised, how would you know? How, how could we tell? It comes out as symptoms of mental illness. It is that straightforward. It is that obvious. And we have been missing the elephant in the room. Big time. Big time. And I, 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 like I said, the we were talking earlier, it's, like, it's such a huge aha moment when you say it, right? Like when the people... It seems like it's intuitive when you say it, but we haven't been addressing it. We haven't been addressing it at all. And so what are some of the, the, the therapeutics that you've, been, that you've seen that have been effective, whether that's keto, low-carb, intermittent fasting? What, what is, seems to be effective when it comes to improving folks' mental health? So the really great news is there are a range of options, and a lot of them are common-sense lifestyle strategies. So diet or nutrition, exercise, good sleep, reducing your substance use, stress reduction, all of those things. Sometimes people need a little more complicated intervention, looking for nutrient deficiencies or hormones, whatever. So on the surface, a lot of people hear me say something like that and think he's just a health and wellness guy. He's not talking about real mental illness. He's not talking about bipolar disorder or schizophrenia. Those are real mental disorders and health and wellness has nothing to do with those. And the great news is that actually metabolic psychiatry has everything to do with those and that we can use sophisticated, scientific metabolic interventions like ketogenic therapies, which are evidence-based treatments for epilepsy or seizures. They can, the ketogenic diet can stop seizures and guess what? The ketogenic diet for some people can stop serious symptoms of serious mental illnesses like hallucinations, delusions, crippling depression, anxiety, OCD, that people are in fact using these strategies to heal and recover. Sometimes they're able to get off medications, but importantly, they are living new lives. They are becoming people that they didn't think it was possible to be. They didn't think they could feel so good. They didn't think they could think so clearly. They didn't think they could be optimistic and confident. And they're finding a new way of being in the world. 
I, I, I love it so much. It's like more tools to offer, right? There is, like, there is obviously see, seeking therapy, there's medication, but there's another aspect, another tool in the arsenal for folks to be offered that can be quite effective. And so I, I'm curious to, to hear from you, whether that's in your practice or something that you've seen on the sidelines, like a story where that impact of improving their, a patient's mental health or metabolic health has really made a, a huge impact in their life. Like if you had a, a case where that comes to mind where, hey, like what a change, like whether it's, I don't know, like a bipolar or severe depression. I, I have to pick and choose. Yeah. I literally have hundreds of people come to mind and uh, so it's hard to even sort through them. Yeah. Wide range of diagnoses, but you know, one person who's very graciously and generously sharing his story publicly is Matt Bazuki, and he just spoke here at the conference yesterday to tell his story about how he suffered from very severe bipolar disorder, accompanied with psychotic episodes. He was homeless for a while. He had tried 29 different medications. He had seen over 40 different mental health professionals. He had had several psychiatric hospitalizations, numerous residential treatment programs, and he and his family had access to the best of the best care. They were getting the very best that the mental health field had to offer. And at the end of the day, they were being told that Matt has treatment-resistant bipolar disorder, that they are just gonna need to accept that he is going to live a second-class life, he may be disabled for life, that that's just the best that we, the mental health field, can do. And he was trying all sorts of alternative interventions. He cleaned up his diet. He tried paleo and gluten-free. He tried, you know, yoga and meditation. He tried exercise. He got off of alcohol and drugs. And he still had treatment-resistant bipolar disorder. And only when... He and his family came to me and we started a ketogenic diet, a medical grade ketogenic diet. So this isn't him going out on the internet searching for keto and trying to lose a little weight. This is a medical grade epilepsy intervention that was supervised by physician, dietitian, and others. But when we implemented that treatment for him, he found a new life. His bipolar disorder has been in remission for three years now. He is slowly but surely getting off his psychiatric medications, remaining stable, is able to function, able to work a full-time job now, something that the psychiatrist that had been treating him said might be impossible for him to do. And, uh, and the reality is he is one of hundreds and hundreds of stories. He is not an anecdote. He is one of hundreds and hundreds of stories of people finding their way to improved mental health and metabolic health. That's incredible. I, I, I love hearing those stories. I, I, I think also of uh, Carrie Brown. She's someone that also has been very active in promoting a ketogenic diet, how it affected her bipolar journey. So I, I, I'm so appreciative to hear those stories and because it's just pure inspiration, pure, pure inspiration on where people can end up in terms of improving their, their mental health side. So Chris, I want to hear how do people learn more about the amazing work you're doing, the book, something of your research, how do people track you down? So the easiest place is brainenergy.com. I've got a website. There's also, you can learn about the book, you can, you can get access to hundreds of free podcasts, articles, other things that I've done. If you don't want to spend 20 bucks on a book, you can, you can get it all for free or a lot of it for free. Um, and uh, you can take a self-assessment, you can do all sorts of stuff. Yeah, I, I'll say, I'll say it, buy the book, yo. Like I, <laughs> I, uh, I got the... I got a physical copy. I got the audio book as well. I try and share it 
to anybody that's willing to listen because it's a game changer, folks. And I don't say this lightly. Like this is, you're going to see a revolution in terms of how we're going to approach mental health. And, and it starts with gentlemen like Chris and their initiatives and they're amplifying this message. And so I, I didn't say it lightly. I don't say it lightly, man. This is a legend right here, Dr. Chris Palmer at the Metabolic Health Summit. That's real. All right. So thank you so much for tuning in, folks. Thanks.